Welcome to this episode of uh, Doodly. During the course of uh, next few minutes, we will be trying to understand the governing principles uh, behind the functioning of uh, Venturi masks. All of us would have used uh, our hose pipe with water to either water the garden or wash our vehicles. Normally, this is what happens. If we occlude uh, half of the opening of the water pipe, the water flows faster. So by reducing the area of the end of the pipe available for the water to flow, we're forcing the same amount of water to flow through a reduced area. This can only happen if the rate at which water flows or the velocity of flow increases. This makes sure that the water reaches the farthest end of the garden or generates enough pressure to wash the dirt. If we have ever done this, we would have applied the practical aspect of the law of conservation of energy without having realized. Law of conservation of energy states that if no energy is added into a system or removed from a system, the total energy of the system always remains constant. So the energy can only be transformed from one form to the other form. So we can have several different types of energies, potential energy, kinetic energy, etc. So the total energy would be sum of both the kinetic and the potential energies. So the velocity or the flow of the system would represent the kinetic energy and the pressure a system exerts on its sides would represent the potential energy. If for some reason the kinetic energy increases, the potential energy has to decrease in order to keep the total energy of the system constant. This is what essentially used in the design and functioning of a Venturi device. We let the oxygen flow through a tubing by introducing a constriction or an orifice, we increase the velocity of flow of oxygen, thereby increasing the kinetic energy of the system. In order to govern the, obey the law of conservation of energy, the potential energy of the system would drop, thereby creating a sub-atmospheric pressure. By providing openings on the Venturi device at the point of the orifice, we allow atmospheric air to be entrained into the device. Now, the size of the orifice and the area available for the entrainment of air together would determine something called as the entrainment ratio. This entrainment ratio is fixed for a given Venturi device. Conventionally, Venturi masks come with a mask and about five or six different color-coded Venturi devices. Each device will have its own recommended flow rate of oxygen and a fixed entrainment ratio. Together the, with the flow rate and the entrainment ratio, each Venturi device would provide a particular FiO2. Over the next few slides, we would be mathematically analyzing how a particular colored Venturi would give a particular FiO2. For the purpose of simplicity, I have made an assumption or I made a correction that room air would have 20% oxygen instead of 21%. We start with a green Venturi which has an entrainment ratio of 1 is to 1. That would mean for each 100 ml of oxygen flowing through the device, another 100 ml of room air would be entrained. So with the recommended flow rate of 15 liters of oxygen for the green venturi, a total flow of 30 liters would be generated as 15 liters of room air would be entrained. This results in a 60% FiO2. 
hundred ml of oxygen having hundred ml of oxygen, and hundred ml of air having about twenty ml of oxygen. Totally, in the two hundred ml, we would have hundred and twenty ml of oxygen, which would translate to FiO two of sixty percent. A red venturi has an entrainment ratio of one is to three. That means for each hundred ml of oxygen flowing through the venturi device, three hundred ml of room air would be entrained. So with the recommended flow of about ten liters, entraining thirty liters of room air would generate a total flow of around forty liters. So, 100 ml of oxygen having 100 ml of oxygen, and 300 ml of air having 60 ml of oxygen. Totally, when we add them up, we will have about 160 ml of oxygen in 400 ml of total volume. That would translate to an FiO2 of around 40 percent. A yellow venturi has an entrainment ratio of 1 is to 5. For each 100 ml of oxygen flowing through the device, another 500 ml of room air is entrained, having a total volume of around 600 ml. With the recommended flow rate being about 8 liters of oxygen, 40 liters of room air being entrained, a total volume or a total flow rate of around 48 liters is achieved. How does this translate to an FiO2 of 35%? So, if you look at the mixture of 100 ml of oxygen and 500 ml of air, which is the entrainment ratio, which has got a total volume of 600 ml, of which 100 ml of oxygen gives 100 ml of oxygen, the 500 ml of room air would have another 100 ml of oxygen. Together, about 200 ml of oxygen in total volume of 600 ml. Which translates to an FiO2 of 35. The orange venturi has an entrainment ratio of 1 is to 7. So for each 100 ml of oxygen flowing through the device, or 700 ml of room air would be entrained, generating a total volume of around 800 ml. With the recommended flow rate of oxygen being 6 liters. Another 42 liters of room air would be entrained, thereby generating a total flow of 48 liters. How does this translate to an FiO2 of 31? So, if you look at the 100 ml and the 700 ml of uh, mixture, 100 ml of oxygen would have 100 ml of oxygen, whereas 700 ml of air would have 140 ml of oxygen. So the total volume of around 800 ml would have 240 ml of oxygen. This would translate to an FiO2 of 31 percent. A white venturi has an entrainment ratio of 1 is to 10. That is, for each 100 ml of oxygen flowing through the device, another one liter of room air would be entrained. With the recommended flow rate of oxygen being four liters, another forty liters of room air would be entrained, thereby generating a total flow of around forty-four liters. So, if we look at the mixture of hundred ml of oxygen and thousand ml of air, we would have a total volume of around thousand one hundred ml, of which the hundred ml of oxygen would contribute hundred ml of oxygen. The thousand ml of air would have about two hundred ml of oxygen in it. Thereby, totally we would have around three hundred ml of oxygen in thousand one hundred ml of total volume. That would roughly translate to about twenty eight percent FiO two. A blue venturi has an entrainment ratio of one is to twenty. That is, for each unit of oxygen flowing through the venturi device. 20 units of room air would be entrained so 100 ml of oxygen flowing through would entrain about 2000 ml of air 
So with the recommended flow rate being 2 liters of oxygen, another 40 liters of room air would be entrained, thereby generating a total flow of 42 liters. So if we look at the mixture of 100 ml of oxygen and 2000 ml of air, 100 ml of oxygen would have 100 ml of oxygen, 2000 ml of air would have around about 400 ml of oxygen. So together, the total volume of 2100 ml would have around 500 ml of oxygen. That would roughly translate to an FiO2 of 24%. I hope you found this video useful. Please feel free to go through the video again. Please do pause the video at uh, each of the slides where the calculations are made so that you can do the math yourself and convince yourself. Also, the assumption that true math has only about 20% uh, of oxygen instead of 21% would skew the calculations slightly. This assumption was made only to uh, simplify the calculations so that we can understand this uh, whole process a bit more easily. Thank you.